presents Rutgers University Women's Basketball. Tonight, from the Rutgers Athletic Center in Piscataway, it's a Big Ten Conference matchup as the Indiana Hoosiers take on the 17th-ranked Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Hello again, everyone. Lou Brogno with you on the call alongside Dom Savino. We welcome you to the rack. Another important game within the Big Ten Conference tonight. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers coming off a tough two-game road trip, losing to a very good Iowa team and then bouncing back with a big win against Penn State. But Dom, Indiana is a team that the Scarlet Knights have struggled with over the past several years. In fact, the Hoosiers have won the last three straight against RU. Yeah, Rutgers won the first three meetings with Indiana in Big Ten play, but like you said, it's been all Hoosiers as of late. The one good thing for Rutgers, though, coming off a bounce back win against Penn State, and Stink Shakari has been on a roll in the post. Indiana features one of the top offensive players in the Big Ten Conference. Jalen Penn has been carrying the offensive load for the Hoosiers, including a 28-point outburst, a career high in a big win against Michigan. Yeah, some of the big suspects for Indiana, Ali, Pat Berg, Brett Brenna Wise, they've struggled as of late, but it's been Jalen Penn, the sophomore wing out of Louisville, Kentucky, who's been leading the charge for the Hoosiers. And on the other side for Rutgers, Stacia Carey has been a solid performer for the Scarlet Knights. A big game in the win against Penn State. 19 points and 7 rebounds against the Nittany Lions. She has been Rutgers' wonder woman over the last few games. Talking to the Scarlet Knights assistant coach Nadine Doman before this one, she called Stacia Carey one of the best post players she's seen in quite a long time. And when you average 22 points over a three-game stretch and you hit your 1,000-point career mark in the last few weeks it's a pretty solid month for station carry another big game here at the rack indiana and rutgers opening tip moments away here on btn plus for at 15.7 points a game six best best in the conference problem is she's averaged less than four points over her last three games she's somebody who the hoosiers will look for to have a big breakout game today Hoosiers have lost three of their last four, losing to Maryland in their last contest, 76-56. And the Scarlet Knights have won 11 of their last 12. A win over Penn State on the road, 69-61 out in Happy Valley. Ben Du Yaney for Indiana flips it back outside. This is Jalen Penn driving in the lane and the foul underneath on Rutgers. Scarlet Knights, Victoria Harris called for the personal first team foul on RU. A good drive there by Jalen Penn. We talked about her right at the top. She has been dynamite in Big Ten play. And this is what Rutgers can't allow Indiana to do a lot of tonight. That's shoot free throws because they're one of the best free throw shooting teams in the conference. And Rutgers against Iowa and Penn State in particular let those teams get to the stripe way too much. Hoosiers 75% from the stripe this season as a team. And Jalen Penn, a 70% free throw shooter, hits both. And Indiana takes the early lead. They're up 2-0. Here's CC Cryer. Flips it over to Sierra Calhoun, who gets the start here tonight for Rutgers. Kind of a different looking starting lineup for RU. Calhoun breaks free. Flips it back outside to Cryer. CC dribbles in. Bounce pass. Stacia Carey drives on the baseline. Puts it up. Can't score. But Victoria Harris there to clean up. And we're tied at two. That's the trademark Stacia Carey post move, that little up and under, a little errant on it, but Victoria Harris, one of the top seniors on this team there to clean it up. Allie Patberg trying to bounce that pass in, but Cryer steals for Rutgers, flips it to Sharice Wilson, draws a triple team in the paint, and Cryer over to Harris. Victoria Harris shuffles her feet, traveling the call, and on the turnover, Indiana gets it back. Rutgers leads this series all-time 4-3. Indiana winning last year, 69-58. And as we mentioned earlier, the Hoosiers have won three straight against the Scarlet Knights. This is a different team than the one Rutgers has seen the last few years. Tyra Buss, Amanda Cahill, two of the top five scorers in Indiana program history. They graduated after they won the WNIT last year. So it's the two transfers with... Pat Berg and Wise who lead it, and some of the sophomores that you may be familiar with, with Yaney and Penn. Yaney with that last basket to give the Hoosiers a two-point lead. It's 4-2 Indiana. Here is Sierra Calhoun, the transfer from Ohio State. 
Stacia Carey launches a three, doesn't go. And the rebound comes out to Brenna Wise. If there's been one problem in Carey's game so far this year, she's now one of 15 from behind the arc. Ali Patberg, as Dom mentioned earlier, almost 16 points a game, floats it up and in. Outstanding player, Redshirt Jr. out of Columbus, Indiana. Indiana needs to get her going. She's a unique point guard because she facilitates well, one of the top assisters in the conference. But she's also able to score off the bounce and knock down the three. But it's just not been a great few games for her. Wilson fakes the three, drives in, can't score. And the rebound ripped down by Jalen Penn. Indiana off to a good start. They're up by four at 6-2 Hoosiers. And then driving is Jalen Penn for the nice drive on the left side. And Coach Stringer wants a quick timeout here for the Scarlet Knights. Seven minutes. Way too easy. 12 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And a timeout on the floor. Indiana up by six. They lead it eight to two on BTN+. Plus. Indiana up by six, it's eight to two. Hoosiers, Rutgers a slow start, one for four from the field. Conversely, Indiana three for three. Yeah, we've seen this from Rutgers. They've been prone to get off to some slow starts lately. You look at the Penn State game on Sunday, Rutgers scored just nine points in the first quarter. And no surprise to see C. Vivian Stringer take a timeout, especially because, Lou, that last basket, the one from Jalen Penn, just way too easy, able to penetrate on the left side of the basket with no defensive pressure for Rutgers. She's a defensive-minded head coach and not happy with it at all. Rutgers Hall of Fame head coach C. Vivian Stringer in her 24th season here at RU, 493 wins with the Scarlet Knights. Of course, overall her 48th season, 1,013 career victories. Zippy Broughton into the lineup early for the Scarlet Knights. Carry inside Harris, puts it up, can't score, gets her own rebound, still can't score. And Indiana comes out of there with it. And Allie Patberg will walk it across for the Hoosiers. Indiana up eight to two, 640 remaining here in the first. Patberg being played tough by CeCe Cryer. Tough defense by Cryer. Patberg just dribbling around. Can't find an open teammate. Now finally gets it to Yaney. Three on the shot clock. Yaney floats it up. Doesn't go. Rebound knocked around, and Harris saves it in the corner. That is textbook defense there from CeCe Cryer. Patberg couldn't find any separation from the Rutgers redshirt junior. Here's Sierra Calhoun. Flips to carry top of the key. Cryer calls the play. Broughton comes out to meet the pass. Calhoun. On the left wing, tough defense here by the Hoosiers. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Cryer drives in, floats it up, can't score. Harris gets the rebound, has it blocked underneath. And last touched by Rutgers. A couple of offensive rebounds early for Victoria Harris, but got to be able to put some of those back. One of three from the, well now one of four from the floor early. Rutgers has scored just two points in the first four plus minutes. So Pat Berg brings it across. Bounce pass, Yaney comes out to meet it. Dribbles in against Calhoun. And Sierra Calhoun with tough defense forces the turnover. That's exactly what Rutgers needs. When the offense is stalling early, you need to try to Generate some energy through your defense. We saw it from CC Cryer on the last possession, hounding Allie Patberg. There by Sierra Calhoun, somebody who just last season you may have thought of as a score first guard. The three pointers kind of struggled for her this year and able to force a turnover from Yaney instead. CC Cryer between the circles. Zippy Broughton, the impressive freshman. Caitlin Jenkins in the game now for the Scarlet Knights. Here's Cryer for three, can't connect. CC Cryer's had a Solid year from three-point range, 32%, but couldn't hit that one. 
And Hackberg takes the three off the back rim, doesn't go. And hustling in the corner is Broughton, knocked out by Indiana. It'll be Rutgers basketball. Actually, it's a foul called on the Hoosiers. Yeah, they tag Alexa Goulbe, the freshman from Latvia, with that foul. And like you said, just a great little move from Zippy Broughton. Great effort from her slipping inside. She knows she's faster than the 6'3 forward, sneaking in there, drawing the foul, and getting the ball back for Rutgers. So Cryer dribbles across the midcourt line. Rutgers down by six. It's 8-2 Indiana. CC flips inside Jenkins. Makes a tough move and can't score against two defenders. And when you're going to generate all that contact, you've got to go up strong instead of fading away like Jenkins did. Freshman Grace Berger in the game now for Indiana. Flips it back to Pat Berg. High off the glass. And Broughton breaks out for RU. Nice bounce pass, Cryer, but can't finish. We talk all the time about the gimmies for Rutgers. You got to make your layups. Rutgers loves getting the turnover or the bad shot and going off on the run out. Rutgers 1 of 11 from the floor to start. Here's Goulbay, puts it up, can't connect. Cryer pulls down the rebound. Zippy Broughton accelerating, loses the handle, and knocked out by the Hoosiers. Well, the great news for Rutgers is the defense has been pretty stellar out of the timeout. The bad news is Rutgers is 0 for its last 9 from the floor, and they've gotten some pretty decent looks. Jenkins had a nice little post move before she fell away. Harris has had some good looks. Cryer just missed that layup. Got to continue to generate some more good looks and finally get some of them to fall. The steal by Grace Berger puts it up. Can't score. Rebound underneath. Good defense from behind by Calhoun. And neither team able to find the basket at the moment. Approaching three and a half remaining in the first. Rutgers with just two points. Here's Cryer. Bounce pass in to Carey. Stacia Carey against two defenders. Puts it up and draws the foul. That's what you need to do in a situation like this where Rutgers can't buy a basket early. Give it to your best player. Wonder Woman, I called her at the top of the broadcast. Stacia Carey, great free throw shooter. A nice little move into the paint. And Goulbay was a step behind. And Carey tried to break the slump from the stripe. 77% free throw shooter, Stacia Carey. And her first is good as she gets the roll. Carey honored prior to the game for scoring her 1,000th point a couple of games ago here at the rack. Averaging 12 points, six rebounds per game. Had a big effort against Penn State, as we mentioned, 19 points against the Nittany Lions. And her second free throw does not go. So it's an eight to three game. Long three point shot, good. Brenna Wise, who's a 46% three point shooter, drills that one inside carry, gets position and scores. Good answer, but Rutgers on the defensive end, you cannot give up open looks to Brenna Wise because she can get hot early from deep. Pat Berg, Wise, fakes the three, now dribbles in, and Caitlin Jenkins gets a piece of it, but might have got a piece of Wise as well. A oh, smart move by Indiana. Go back to Brenna Wise, and Wise is somebody that Carey knows and vice versa. They were teammates at Pitt when Wise was a freshman and Carey was a sophomore, and that was just a good first move from Wise with the little jab step to get Carey off balance. Brenna Wise, 92% free throw shooter. That's the best mark in the Big Ten Conference. She is pretty much automatic from the stripe. Now what an addition she's been, adding Pat Berg into the lineup as well. Talking to Indiana assistant coach Glenn Box before tonight's game, he said, you know, it's easy to compare Pat Berg to Tyra Buss from last year, Kay Hill to Brenna Wise from this year, but they're four different players, and... The only the one main uh, similarity is they're the, the top two scorers from each of these teams. Last year, Buss and Cahill. This year, Pat Berg and Wise. Takia Mack in the lineup for the first time for the Scarlet Knights. Caitlin Jenkins called for the travel. 
Actually, they call a three-second violation. Could have been a travel as well. 13 to five, Indiana. 225 remaining here in the first. Pat Burke flips it into Wise. Trying to back in, hands it off. Jump shot outside, good! Grace Berger hits it. Indiana with a 10 point lead. This is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Hoosiers. It's been a rough four games from them. They've lost three of four. A couple of really close games before that Maryland loss on Sunday. And just what Rutgers needed, CC Cryer drills a three. Scarlet Knights desperately needed that. Down 15 to eight now, inside two minutes. And off to Penn, outside Pat Berg. Pulls up for a short jumper, can't connect. And Calhoun trying to save it to Mack, but it goes off of Mack's hands out of bounds. So Indiana retains possession. Here's Wise for three. She was free momentarily. Oh, the Rutgers players might have gotten a piece of that. Offensive foul called against the Scarlet Knights in the paint. It was Takia Mack who closed out well on the three from Wise, but then you, you make a good play on the defensive end. You got to get a bucket on the other side. And it looked like Mack just a little overzealous trying to back her down away from your screen. I mean, for Rutgers, you've only played like you played less than nine minutes of basketball. The sky is not falling, but you need to turn some of these defensive stops into offense. Trying to back in Kim Royster, trying to make a move on Jenkins, does, but can't connect. And here comes Rutgers the other way. Scarlet Knights a chance to cut it to five. Here's Broughton, dribbles in, flips it back to, to Kia Mack, who puts it up and in off the glass. And a technical wow. foul called against Rutgers. I believe they called that on Mack. I'll take a look. Mack finishes the layup, and then, yeah, right there, Takia Mack says something, looked like in the direction of Brenna Wise. Wow. And that's her second personal foul. Fourth team foul. Well, when Mack came on the floor, pretty quickly on, she was on the defensive end clapping her hands. You could see she had a ton of energy. And the only thing I can assume is whatever she said to Brenna Wise after making that layup was not courteous. Well, Brenna Wise automatic from the free throw line, takes the tees and hits them both. So a critical mistake by Rutgers. Takia Mack heads to the bench. Rutgers relies on her to come off the bench and predominantly provide some spark, some defensive intensity. But that's not the way you should go about doing it. And Indiana, of course, has possession. So a chance for a four-point play, except they throw it away. Broughton puts it in. Zippy Broughton with a huge shot. And it's a five-point game. That press break from Indiana almost looked like they were trying to shoot on that basket. But for Rutgers, you'll take a basket down by a couple possessions, get a stop here, try to get one more before the first quarter buzzer. Here's Yaney. Gives it inside. Wise for three off the rim, though. Rebound to Noga Peleg Pelk just inserted into the game. Here's Broughton, flips to Pelk. Inside Jenkins. Good ball movement here by Rutgers. Sharice Wilson. Big possession here for the Scarlet Knights. Wilson puts it up and draws the foul. So despite all the troubles that Rutgers has had in this first quarter, if Sharice Wilson can hit both free throws here, they're only down by three. Yeah, it's been a wacky first quarter for Rutgers. Nearly six minutes without a point. And... Rutgers using some good defensive stops in the middle of this quarter. That's how you're able to right the ship early. We saw it against Penn State on Sunday. Rutgers only scored nine points in the first quarter, but they hung around because Penn State had some serious troubles from the floor themselves. And by the half, Rutgers was on top. 
Wilson coming off a 14-point game against Penn State. It's both free throws, and indeed it is a three-point Indiana lead. 17-14, 10 seconds left in the quarter. Here's Pat Berg, dribbles in, flips it outside to Wise. Three seconds, driving in and floating it in is Ben Duyaney with a big bucket for Indiana. And the Hoosiers head to the sideline with a five-point lead. Yeah, you can see right there, Yaney able to float it over Caitlin Jenkins and a bit of a backbreaker for Rutgers after a strong end to the quarter. So our score after one, Indiana 19, Rutgers 14. Second quarter upcoming on BTN+. Plus. To the rack a couple of hours ago. So Rutgers down by five, Scarlet Knights with the basketball. Rutgers shot just five of 15 in that first quarter, but it seems like Indiana shot a whole lot better, but not really. They shot just 37% in that first quarter. Now part of it is for Indiana is they were able to take six free throws and unsurprisingly they made all six. And that is exactly where Rutgers needs to start by limiting this Hoosiers offense. Don't allow them to get to the free throw line. Pat Berg has had her struggles on the offensive end. We've talked about it. Brenna Wise had some wide open looks in the first quarter. Don't allow Indiana to get to the free throw line. See if you can continue to limit Pat Berg and just cover Brenna Wise and Rutgers will be in better shape. And driving and scoring. Beautiful drive by Yaney. So Ben do Yaney a chance for a three point play. Yeah, this doesn't help either. Everybody at Indiana praises Yaney for her development. Now a sophomore coming out of Portland, Oregon. You hear so much about how she's the top defender on this team. She's got a 6-3 wingspan. We saw her at the top of at the start of the game. She takes the tip at the start of the game for Indiana because she's got such a great vert. Just able to get to the basket in a short amount of strides and can kind of take the defense off guard by doing that. It is a three-point play for Ben Yaney, averaging 10 points a game for the Hoosiers, and their lead is back up to eight. It's 22 to 14. Here's Caitlin Jenkins trying to back her way in. Makes a nice move, but cannot finish. And Indiana the other way. Yaney breaks free, floats it up. Strong rebound underneath by Kim Royster, and then open for the jump shot is Brenna Wise. And again, Indiana up by 10, matches their largest lead of the game. Here's Sharice Wilson, flips it outside, gets it back. Wilson driving in, puts up a tough shot. And the Hoosiers come back the other way. Driving on the baseline, unable to score. Zippy Broughton comes out of there with it. Off to the races, lays it up, can't score. A couple of layups now for Rutgers that just have not been able to knock down. And in a game where you're not shooting well, you need some of those layups to keep you in a game. Here's Bendu Yaney between the circles. Flips it outside. Kiana Worthen in the game now for Indiana. That one thrown away and saved by Penn. Three on the shot clock. Takes a three off the rim, no. Sharice Wilson with the rebound. Flips up to Broughton. Zippy stops, pops, doesn't go. Rebound underneath. Carry. Here's Peleg Pelk for three. That's off the back rim. And Stacia Carey with a strong rebound. A couple of huge offensive rebounds there for Carey. Rutgers, the shot selection has struggled at points in this first half, and you need some of those offensive rebounds to get a bucket here. Here's Wilson outside. 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Scarlet Knights. Down by 10. Wilson puts the brakes on, gives to Broughton, pops a three, it is short. Victoria Harris checks in for RU, and CC Cryer as well. Well, that offensive possession for Rutgers, I mean, you can see it. Broughton had to force the three at the end of the shot clock. Not a lot of ball movement. A couple of threes, offensive rebounds, holding the ball. We'd love to see Rutgers swing the ball and get more movement on the offensive end and try to create some better shots. Worthen flips outside wise. 
Brenna Wise to Yamey. 10 on the shot clock. Rutgers defense turns it up a notch. Worthen outside, five on the clock. Puts up a top shot, scores, and the foul. Kayana Worthen, the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale with a beautiful drive. Yeah, this is quite the drive. Seals off Pelic Pelk and then Victoria Harris as she slams the stanchion under the basket. She knew it. She dropped that right arm to try to get in the way of Worthen. And again, frustrating for Rutgers because they defend well for 25 seconds. Pelic Pelk able to hang with a couple of push-offs from Kiana Worthen. And then right at the end of the shot clock, Rutgers gives up too good of a look. And it is a three-point play as Worthen hits the free throw. It's a 13-point Indiana lead, 27-14, their largest lead of the game. Sharice Wilson angles to the left side. Rutgers in dire need of a bucket. Here's Cryer. Got a mismatch. And Cryer says, get out of there. Cryer, nice job as she splits the defense and lays it up and in. That's brilliant from CeCe Cryer. Identified that she had the bigger Ghoul Bay on her, told Jordan Wallace to clear out and was able to take the 6'3 freshman forward all by herself. And at the other end, Jordan Wallace with a nice block thwarts Ben Duyaney trying to drive down the lane. That's an ankle breaker from CeCe Cryer. Substitutions for Indiana. Grace Berger back in the game. Allie Patberg had a brief breather, and she's back in there for the Hoosiers. And a foul way up top called on RU. And that'll be the Scarlet Knights' third team foul here in this second quarter. Patberg. Trying to get it in, does. Berger, top of the key to Jalen Penn. Penn dribbles in, stops, pops, doesn't go. Rebound comes to CC Cryer, who leads the break here for the Scarlet Knights. Try to bounce pass, try to sneak that one in past Pat Berg. Kickball, and Rutgers retains possession. That ball ricocheting out by Terry Morin. There she is, fifth year head coach of Indiana. 98-58 with the Hoosiers in her 16th season overall. Just three victories shy of the 300 win mark in her career. She's done an outstanding job. Cryer fakes the three, now dribbles in and scores. Double clutch from CC Cryer. And Rutgers, we keep saying it, they need some offense from somebody. Maybe it's CC Cryer who can put Rutgers on her back at the end of this first half. Indiana with a nine-point lead. 5.15 remaining in the first half. Penn takes the shot off the mark. Good defense again by the Scarlet Knights. Noka Pelik Pelk flips outside Cryer, dumps inside. And that'll be a travel on Jordan Wallace. And a timeout on the floor. 4.52 remaining second quarter. Indiana with a nine-point lead. They're up 27-18 on BTN+. Plus. Point lead. Hoosiers up 27 to 18. Indiana coming in having lost three of their last four. Rutgers conversely has won 11 of their last 12. But the Hoosiers up by nine early. Rutgers shooting just seven of 23 
in the first half. Terry Morin's got to be happy with the defense, the defensive effort from her team so far. And on this little slump for Indiana, I mean, they've lost some close games. Only lost by three to Purdue, who's one of the best teams in the Big Ten. Lost by six to Northwestern, who's been pretty good. And it's just the way the conference has been this year. Rutgers defense, Sharice Wilson picks the pocket and scores. So are you defense getting it done, creating some offense? And the Scarlet Knights down by seven, 27 to 20. Alexa Goulbe puts it up. Traveling is the call. So it will be Rutgers basketball down by seven. Are you trying to make a run here? And Rutgers is on a little 6-0 run over the last two minutes or so. I mean, you see CC Cryer with a couple of really nice moves around the basket. Sharice Wilson able to get the fast break layup that Rutgers feasts off of, off the turnovers. Uh, that's not going to help. That's an excellent play by Ali Patberg, who throws it off of Stacia Carey. And Indiana gets possession. She's heady. I mean, she plays like a point guard because she is a point guard. And you just look at her stats and you see, well, she's a pure scorer. It's just that she's able to do both things. She can score off the bounce, and she's able to feed her teammates, one of the best passers in this conference. It does a lot of things well. Leads the team in steals, assists. Leads the Big Ten in assists, by the way. And that's part of been the problem, partially been the problem for Indiana lately, is they haven't gotten much from Pat Burke. She's averaging three and a half points over this little three-game slump of hers, shooting worse than 20% from the floor. Three-point shot off the front rim doesn't go by Gould Bay, and here comes Rutgers. CC Cryer dribbles in, puts it high off the glass, and draws the foul. CC Cryer playing inspired basketball here in this first half. She has looked sharp. A couple of baskets, some really solid ankle-breaking moves. This is just a blow-by. She's able to get Pat Berg flat on her feet a little bit. And we know Cryer is speedy, attacks the rim. And she's been pretty solid from the free-throw line this season as well. And she hits the first. You see a 67% free-throw shooter. Richard Jr. out of Philadelphia. And her second on the way. Good as well. She rattles it home. And Rutgers... Hanging around, cuts it to five, it's 27-22. 3.20 remaining here in the first half. Pat Berg, way up top. Flips it outside to Berger. Reese Berger, impressive freshman out of Louisville. Jump shot for three, doesn't go. Taken by Yaney. Ball loose on the floor. It'll be a jump ball in Indiana. Has the alternating arrow. Great aggressiveness from Alexa Goulbay. Able to jar that ball free from Carey. She poked it away. And then Carey able to sneak in there and force the jump ball. So Ali Patberg to inbound. Gets it in. Less than three minutes now, left first half. Yeating hands it off. Pat Berg, Cryer all over. And Cryer making a case for a push-off offensive foul while she's defending. Pulling up for the short jumper, Grace Berger. Nice, sweet shot. And Indiana back up by seven, 29-22. Pele Pelk between the circles. Flips outside to Cryer. Pulls up for the short jumper off the back rim. Tapped out by Carey, and it finds its way to Cryer. Sharice Wilson for three off the back rim. Stacia Carey doing everything she can to snag some offensive rebounds. You can just see Wilson was not really in rhythm on that three. Royster trying to spin her way in. And that will be a traveling violation. Wonderful defense from Jordan Wallace. Able to wall off Royster and not commit the foul, not leaning over. And Arella Garantes checks into the game for the first time for Rutgers. Garantes has been a starter of late, but 
not getting the nod tonight. Yeah, the official word, Rutgers trying to change some things up offensively with Garantes coming off the bench. Sierra Calhoun made her second start of the season. For Garantes, she's had some slow games lately. She averaged just eight points a game over that two-game road trip and shot under 30%. We'll see if coming off the bench, she comes out and provides a spark. Averaging 11 points a game overall on the season. Transfer from Texas Tech and Stacia Carey getting the rebound. Jordan Wallace gets the rebound. Rutgers cannot connect. And that really typifies what this first half has been all about for Rutgers. Now Rutgers is 6 of 17, so right about 35% on layups in this first half. Jump shot, no. Rebound underneath, put up and in by Kim Royster, who averages almost six rebounds a game. And again, Indiana up by nine. Cryer dribbles in, ticking down towards a minute remaining first half. Garantes, top of the key, Stacia Carey. Sharice Wilson, 10 on the shot clock. Carey inside, Jordan Wallace puts it on the floor. Tough shot, can't connect. Bendu Yaney up ahead for the Hoosiers. 40 seconds left in the half. Trying to dribble through a lot of traffic was Grace Berger, and she's called for the travel. Myel Giles. And Takia Mack, check into the game. Giles' first appearance of the contest. And like some players might have been coming together there a little bit between yeah. Indiana and Rutgers, but no harm, no foul, I guess. Grace Berger for Indiana and Sharice Wilson for Rutgers. I believe both given a warning. Berger was hanging onto the basketball. Sharice Wilson wanted the basketball, and neither was willing to take their hands off of the basketball. Here's Cryer, dribbles in, puts up a tough shot, draws the foul. Cryer is doing what Rutgers needs to do. If the field goals are not going, if the layups are not going, go to the hole, attack the basket, draw the foul, hit some free throws, and that's how you stay in this basketball game. I mean, that's kind of been the, the thing that Indiana has done. They've stayed so close in some of their games lately because they've taken a ton of free throws. This is a position Rutgers has not been in really at all in Big Ten play, where you're down by eight at the end of the first half. But it's only an eight-point deficit for a team that is 16 and 16-4 on the season. So I've got a feeling that Rutgers at halftime try to calm down and relax a little bit because even though this is a position Rutgers has not been in lately, still a lot of basketball. 20 seconds left. Here's Wise, hands it off. Pat Berg trying to drive her way in and the foul called on Rutgers. And the crowd here at the rack, not enamored with the call. Yeah, color me unsurprised that they're not a big fan of the call. A little bit of a shove off out on the perimeter. And here's the thing, the offensive players got the right to move, but Takia Max got the right to stand there and stand her ground. And I've got a feeling that's something along the lines of what C. Vivian Stringer is currently arguing. Allie Patberg at the line. She's an 81% free throw shooter. And she hits the first. The second on the way, good as well. Indiana does an outstanding job at the charity strike. 33-24 the score. Final 10 seconds here of this first half. Rutgers trying to creep a little closer before they head into the locker room. Here's CC Cryer brings it across. Six seconds, down to five. No go, Peleg Pelt dribbles in, it's knocked away. And then at the buzzer, the shot by Yaney, high off the backboard and the first half comes to an end. So a good first half for Indiana on the road. The Hoosiers trying to pull off the upset against the 17th ranked Scarlet Knights. Our score at halftime, Indiana 33, Rutgers 24. It's 3 of 4, they're 2 and 4 in their last six games. They want to win. 
right now tied for sixth in the Big Ten. They're on the road at the top team in the conference, probably playing a little angry because they want to add some wins themselves to their conference record. So this is a determined Indiana team trying to bounce back, and Rutgers is going to have to play very well for the next 20 minutes to come out of here with a W. Scarlet Knights with the basketball, excuse me, with the basketball on their first possession. Not a good start for me in the second half. <laughs> Indiana. <laughs> Not a great start there either. <laughs> ben Duyaney comes up with his steal. And here is Ali Patberg. As Rutgers on their first possession turns it over. Dribbling down the lane, but losing the ball out of bounds. Last touched by Rutgers, Jalen Penn trying to make something happen. And Indiana will toss it in on the baseline with 12 seconds on the shot clock. Bounce pass into Penn, making a nice move underneath. Good defense by Stacia Carey as Penn loses the ball out off of Carey. That's two blocks there for Stacia Carey. Not a great scoring first half for her, just one of five from the floor. Penn open for three, got it! Jalen Penn, a 38% three-point shooter, gives Indiana a 12-point lead. 36-24 Hoosiers. Cryer over to Sierra Calhoun, who got the start. Puts up a jump shot, doesn't go. And here comes Indiana. Ben Duyaney breaks free, floats it up and in. Indiana with a 14-point lead. Hoosiers with their largest lead of the game. CC Cryer got stuck behind that screen, and Stacia Carey gave up way too much positioning in the paint. Well, CC Cryer, nice move there to break free and gets an open look. Hits the jump shot, cuts the deficit to 12. 38-26, eight and a half remaining in the third. Jump shot, off the mark, taken by Ben Duyaney. Here comes Rutgers on the run. Sharice Wilson flips outside. Good ball movement here by RU. Inside carry, puts it up and in. Good ball movement that time by Rutgers. A good look by Garantes. That's what the Scrawl Knights need more of because there were way too many possessions in that first half where Rutgers did a lot of dribbling, a lot of walking around, but not a lot of passing to get somebody open. RU draws to within 10, 38-28. Allie Patberg flips in the corner to Jalen Penn. Penn dribbles in, floats it up and in. Beautiful move by Jalen Penn. A great play to get the first step. Jalen Penn has been tremendous in Big Ten play this year. A quiet first half, just four points for her, but she's got five already in the second half. Garantes inside Carey. Stacia Carey puts it up and draws the foul. Stacia Carey getting bumped a bunch from behind. They'll get Kim Royster with that foul. And Stacia Carey just got in deep. And here's that play earlier from CeCe Cryer. The spin move to get around Ben Duyaney. Cryer 13 points. A bright spot here for Rutgers. The Scraw Knights just trying to stay within punching distance and start to put together a scoring run. Stacia, 77% from the line. Rutgers, as a team, 74%. That's third best in the Big Ten. That's been a significant improvement for this team this year. And the second doesn't go. And racing in to get the rebound, Ben Duyaney. So it's an 11-point Indiana advantage, 40-29. Ellie Patberg backs it up. And losing the ball is Yaney on the turnover. Rutgers gets it back. Sierra Calhoun comes out, and Noga Peleg Pelk checks back into the lineup for the Scarlet Knights. Peleg Pelk, 0 of 2 from the floor in that first half, but she's somebody who you think about as being able to come off the bench and provide some instant offense. You think back to the Maryland game 
on New Year's Eve. Rutgers' biggest win of the season came off the bench in the fourth quarter, eight points in 75 seconds. CeCe Cryer with a beautiful move, drives the lane with the left hand and scores. 40 to 31. And Cryer is single-handedly keeping Rutgers right around in this game. Are you turns up the defense a bit. 15 on the shot clock, Pat Berg outside. Flips Yaney, pops a three, got it. Basket's good, I think they called a foul on the rebounding action with the ball in the air. So the basket good and a timeout on the floor. Six minutes, 23 seconds remaining here in the third. Indiana's lead is back up to 12. Hoosiers, 43. Back at the rack where the Scarlet Knights shooting troubles continue. They are just 11 of 34 from the field, just one of six from three-point range. And Indiana on the other side shooting 40% from the field, but the big difference, the Hoosiers 10 for 10 from the free throw line. That's helped. They've been one of the best free throw shooting teams in the Big Ten all season long. And when you get a three right before that timeout from Ben Duyaney, who's been shooting worse than 20% from deep this season, that certainly helps too. Everything's going right so far for Indiana. Sharice Wilson gives to Peleg Pelk. No good drives against two defenders, and they call a travel. Wow, she must have walked before she lost her footing. She had CeCe Cryer open on the right wing, but decided to try to drive it instead. And a foul inside now on Rutgers. It's on Sharice Wilson. That's her second. First team foul on the Scarlet Knights here in the third. Indiana gets it in. Full court pressure here by RU. Crowd wanted a backcourt violation there. But no call. No call. Rutgers comes back. Garantes launches a three off the rim. No. But they go without saying Rutgers really could have used that. Ali Patberg walks it up. Here's Penn, launches a three, in and out. Rebound pulled down by Garantes, and CC Cryer comes back the other way. That is not the Hoosier you want to allow open looks at a three. Rutgers down by 12, 43-31, inside to Carey, puts it in, and the foul. Good look into Stacia Carey, and she has a chance for a three-point play. After three huge games, it's been a little bit of a quiet evening for Stacia Carey, but she can turn it on in a hurry, and in part because she can draw those three-point plays. Nice feed from Sharice Wilson. Carey not afraid to drive right into Ghoul Bay, get to the line, and see if she can bring Rutgers within single digits. Stacia Carey, honorable mention, all Big Ten performer a year ago, and her free throw is no good. Knocked out off of Indiana. Nice job by Garantes to create some havoc there between two defenders. It's a 10-point game. Rutgers trying to whittle it down to single digits. Uh, Cryer had an open Peleg Pelk. Noga Peleg Pelk from downtown. <laughs> and it is a seven-point game. Rutgers crowd getting into it a little bit. 43-36. That was deep. I was going to say Cryer had a wide open Pelic Pelk in the corner off that play. Instead, she found Pelic Pelk from 30 feet out, and she still hit it. Here's Yaney. Flips in the corner, driving on the baseline underneath. Unable to score is Wise. And here comes Rutgers. Down by seven. Pelic Pelk saves it to Garantes, who dribbles in. Can't score. And over the back, the foul will be on Rutgers. And they'll call it on Garantes. That's her first. And there is a timeout on the floor. 4.35 remaining third quarter. Rutgers has whittled it to seven. Indiana up 43-36. Eight. 
from three-point land, but that second made shot, a big one for the Scarlet Knights. Stacia Carey had a couple of big plays in the early portion of this third quarter, a three-point play before that timeout as well. And Rutgers able to force the timeout, very nearly forcing the five-second call. That's what Rutgers, in a lot of ways, has got away from in Big Ten play. They have not shown a lot of full-court press, a lot of the 55 that the Scarlet Knights and CBB and Stringer were known for, for some of the biggest years here for this Rutgers team. But you're down seven. You need some extra possessions. You want to get Indiana out of its rhythm. That's a great way to do it. Run to 55. Terry Moran, the head coach of Indiana. Last year, she guided this team to the WNIT championship. They beat Virginia Tech. They won 15 of their last 17 to finish the season. Finished 23 and 14 and knocked off Virginia Tech 66-57 in the NIT championship game. And a foul underneath called on Rutgers. They'll call it on Pele Pelk. That's her second, third team foul on the Scarlet Knights. Indiana trying to get it in here. And they finally do to Pat Bird. Double team, flips it up ahead. Good job by the Hoosiers to break the pressure. Grace Berger, way up top. Being played by Pele Pelk. Here's Pat Berg. Ali Pat Berg flips it around to Yaney. Yaney dribbles in, blocked underneath by Garantes. Up ahead to Cryer and a foul on Indiana. They'll call it on Pat Berg. That's a wonderful block from Morella Garantes, somebody who is not known for her shot blocking ability. But Garantes has blocked three in this game alone. And no points for her, didn't start, but trying to contribute as Rutgers tries to come back. Here's Garantes, flips it over to Cryer. Bounce pass inside, carry. Nice move off the glass, can't score. Garantes almost able to pick that off deep underneath the basket. Yaney, outside Berger, bounce pass underneath, put up and in. Good job by Indiana as Alexa Gulbe. Scores the bucket for the Hoosiers. That is just great passing. This is an Indiana team that is not known as a collective for its passing ability. Pat Berg is such a great assister, but the Hoosiers are bottom four in assists per game in the conference, but that was a great look. Stacia Carey with a beautiful move, scores, and again, it's a seven-point game, 45-38. It's that tricky drop step that Carey has. And she's able to go left, she's able to go right, she can work from under the basket. A lot of moves in her arsenal. And Indiana turns it over as Brenna Wise not ready for that pass. It goes off of her knee and out of bounds and Rutgers a chance to cut that deficit down to five. Wilson dribbles in, back out Garantes, fakes the three, bounce pass carry, tries to put it on the floor, and it's fouled. Foul will be on the Hoosiers. Wow, they call that on Ben Duyaney, who is on the bottom of the pile. Wow. And Indiana over the limit, so that sends Stacia Carey to the line to shoot two. Uh, Terry Morin, her hands are skyward. She is awfully perplexed. I figured Carey was on top of the pile. That's typically who you'll tag for the foul. But I guess Yaney was the one who yanked her down. Stacia Carey misses the first, and she'll get another. Chance to draw Rutgers to within six. And her second free throw, good. So it is a six-point game, 45-39. Caitlin Jenkins checks in. Stacia Carey comes out. And Rutgers right back into the 55. Rutgers is within two possessions for the first time in this half. See if they can get another stop. 
Indiana finally gets it in. Pat Berg double teamed. Now delivers to Jalen Penn. Penn has it stripped away by Cryer. CC Cryer picks the pocket and then throws it away. Cryer didn't know what she wanted to do. Thought about driving into Pat Berg and then at the last moment trying to kick it out to Pelik Pelk. But the ball was almost out of her hands and wasn't a great pass. Here's Berger behind the back dribble. Puts the brakes on, now double teamed. Throws cross court to Patberg, who drives in and scores. It's a shame, a great defensive possession for Rutgers. You get the steal, and then even though Cryer turns it over, you're right back on the defensive end. But a collapse right at the end. Caitlin Jenkins, the shot blocker, out of position there. 47-39. Noga Peleg Pelk flips it back to Cryer. Inside 10 on the shot clock now. Peleg Pelk back outside Wilson. Down to three on the shot clock. Wilson tries to fire up a three, and that's a shot clock violation. So good job by Indiana defensively. That's one of their best defensive possessions of the game for Indiana, especially at a time where Rutgers is starting to creep back into it. The Hoosiers, by and large, have done a good job breaking this Rutgers press. Straw Knights have tried to be physical, tried to rattle Indiana, and Rutgers has gotten it within eight now, within six a couple of moments ago. But the Hoosiers seem pretty even keeled. Minute and a half left, third quarter. Knocked out by Jenkins on the baseline. Vaney trying to trigger in. Finally does get it into Patberg. Double team stolen by Wilson. But then Jenkins can't find the handle. There's a rugby scrum on the floor. And it will be Indiana basketball on the alternating arrow. Well, maybe Rutgers is getting Indiana, and particularly Ali Patberg, a little bit rattled. The Scarlet Knights were awfully close on that turnover, and Wilson had it for a moment, but rather than taking a timeout, she tried to throw it out to Jenkins, who bobbled it. Indiana's been using a lot of its five seconds to inbound this ball. Hoosiers trying to get it in, still can't get it in, stolen by Jenkins. Flips it over to Takia Mack, who draws the foul. Rutgers defense smothering, creates the turnover, and Takia Mack will go to the line to shoot two. That is beautiful work from Caitlin Jenkins. That's an odd-angled inbounds for Indiana off the deflection. Jenkins takes up so much space, 6'3", a couple extra inches with her big wingspan. Able to force the steal. We'll see it here. She forces the steal like a point guard. The presence of mind to go block to block. Lob it over Ghoul Bay and set up Mac. Takia hits the first and hits both. Rutgers draws to within six. 47-41. Yaney running the baseline. Five second violation. That is the 55 run to perfection from Rutgers right there. So you see Cryer gets it in. Here's Mack. Back to the basket. Comes back outside to Sharice Wilson. Wilson gives to Cryer. CC trying to dribble in against Patberg. Dumps it off Jenkins. Puts it up. No. Rebound. That'll be a jump ball. And the alternating arrow will give it again to Indiana. Well, now Rutgers they ball. say Rutgers ball. They didn't change the arrow. It was Indiana ball a moment ago. Yeah, that's Rutgers basketball. The arrow was incorrect. Oh, the arrow was incorrect. Well, now the arrow is still incorrect because it's pointing at Rutgers still. As I looked at the arrow, of course, it told me it was Indiana's ball, but Scarlet Ains have it. Here's Garantes, draws the foul. So, Arilla Garantes. We'll go to the line. 
and a chance to make it a four-point game. I'll tell you, Lou, this is a wonderful quarter for Rutgers. In a game where it's not had some great offense, it's turned the game into a rock fight. And the Scarlet Knights, by and large, win those rock fights. Misses the free throw. Garantes, a 79% free throw shooter. And the second, good, hits one of two. It is a five-point Indiana lead. 47-42, Jenkins knocks it out on the baseline again. And she's hanging right out there, right in front of Jalen Penn. And the one thing is, Jenkins has been able to get awfully close to the baseline on these inbounds. Usually you're supposed to give about a foot or so, a couple feet. She's not giving anything. Hoosiers get it in. Cool day. To Catberg, but it was knocked away. Rutgers almost came up with another steal. And they do come up with a steal. Garantes dribbles in, takes it to the hole, and scores! It's a three-point game. Rutgers fans on their feet. Indiana can't get it in. Rutgers steals it again. And now you'll have a jump ball. And it will be Hoosiers' ball. And we'll trust that the arrow's correct this time. <laughs> well, Rutgers has just unleashed the 55. Rutgers able to get another steal. Indiana finally gets into the front court for the first time, and it felt like a minute at least. And Garant says, going coast to coast there, kind of selling the head fake on the thought about the pass to Cryer and going to the basket for her first field goal of the contest. Thrown away, intercepted by Rutgers, Sharice Wilson. Rutgers has time, 20 seconds left here in the quarter. That is a veteran's poise right there. Pull it out, you're down by a bucket. Get one final shot to end this third quarter. 47-44. Here's Cryer. Dribbles in, floats it up. No. Put up and in by Garantes. At the buzzer. Rutgers with a flurry at the end of the third quarter. And the Scarlet Knights trail by one. This is wonderful from Garantes. Poise, buzzer right about to go off. The one problem for Rutgers right at the end of the quarter, the Scarlet Knights, I think it was Wilson, got teed up and tempers flaring here at the rack. So Coach Stringer very upset at the technical foul call. So at the end of the third quarter, Rutgers within one, Indiana still has the lead. They're up 47-46 on PTN Plus. Rutgers smothering defense has electrified the crowd here at the Rutgers Athletic Center as we head to the fourth quarter. The Scarlet Knights down by just one. Now at the end of that third quarter, as you take a peek at the Rutgers upcoming schedule, the end of that third quarter, a technical foul was called, and we're kind of waiting to see how things kind of play out here. Yeah, you, you may be able to see it right here. Garantes hits the layup in the final second of the third quarter. I don't know this for certain. We'll wait to see who the call is on, but somebody from Rutgers, I believe it's Sharice Wilson for right there, clapping in Allie Patberg's face. Somebody for Rutgers got teed up at the end of the quarter, so it should be Indiana shooting free throws to start the fourth quarter. But, Lou, I mean, a wonderful final 90 seconds of that third quarter otherwise from Rutgers. A 7-0 run. They forced five Indiana turnovers in 90 seconds of basketball. And if you're the Hoosiers, head coach Terry Morin, you got to calm your team down, and you got to try to figure out how to break the press because Indiana had no answer for the 55. Well, the officials, I think, have cleared everything up. Of course, putting Indiana on the line is not the greatest scenario for Rutgers as Brenna Wise, the top free throw shooter in the Big Ten Conference, will go to the strike.
and it was called on Sharice Wilson. That gives her her third personal foul, first team foul for the Scarlet Knights, and a free throw good. And second good as well. She gets the roll, and Indiana will get the basketball. Well, no, it will be Rutgers basketball. So Indiana gets the technical foul shots, but Rutgers gets possession. So it is a three-point Indiana lead, 49-46. Sharice Wilson trying to dribble in against Patberg, who's right on her. Wilson then puts it up and in off the glass. Strong move by Wilson. Rutgers double teaming Patberg deep in the corner. She dribbles through, flips it up ahead to Worthen. Indiana lead is one. Decent press break there by Indiana. You've got to inbound quickly because the more time Rutgers has to set up, the better that 55 is. 49-48 Hoosiers. Almost thrown away, saved by Worthen. Five on the shot clock. You're down to two. Now one fires up a three. Shot clock violation. The story for this comeback, of course, has been the Rutgers defense. It's that wonderful shot by Sharice Wilson. Rutgers a chance to take the lead. Here's CeCe Cryer, dribbles in, puts the brakes on, gives to Garantes, inside Caitlin Jenkins, puts up the shot and draws the foul. This is just great work from Rutgers. Again, the first half, Rutgers shot 30%. And in the middle of the third quarter, right as Rutgers started to sneak back into it, they go to the 55, and Indiana has not been the same team since. They've not been able to find they're even keel at any point since. Indiana at one point had a 14 point lead. And Jenkins misses the first, so she can tie the score here. Kim Royster checks back into the lineup for the Hoosiers. And the second, no good. So Jenkins misses both free throws and Indiana still has the lead. Almost a double dribble, it is called. About to say almost a turnover and it is a turnover. Yeah, that was Jalen Penn trying to pass the ball across midcourt and the ball kept skipping and you can't pick it up at that point. So Rutgers again a chance to take the lead. Scarlet Knights have never led in this game. I see Caitlin Jenkins come out. Stacia Carey comes back in. I'll be curious to see how the 55 works with Carey on the ball and not Jenkins, who's super long and was able to force some turnovers herself. Here's Carey. Puts it up. Can't score. Again, Rutgers a chance to take the lead. Could not do so. Eight minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the fourth. Indiana with a one-point lead and the ball. Hepburn flips it outside. Jalen Penn. Penn. Bounce pass. Nobody home on the receiving end. In some ways, this is the most frustrating thing for Indiana. Even when they've been able to get into the front court and set up offensively, the two times they've done that in the fourth quarter, they've still turned it over. C.C. Cryer gives to Wilson. Sharice Wilson between the circles. Again, Rutgers a chance to take the lead. Their third possession in a row that they've had that opportunity. Wilson to Garantes. Cryer inside carry. Double teamed. Flips outside. Four on the shot clock. Wilson off the side of the rim. Saved beautifully by Calhoun. Cryer dribbles in. Wilson picks up the loose ball. Sierra Calhoun outside to Garantes. Garantes puts the brakes on, flips it back to Cryer. 15 on the shot clock. 
Cryer dribbles the lane, puts it up, can't score. Again, Rutgers unable to take the lead. Uh, Rutgers keeps getting chances, and it's starting to feel like the first half all over again where the lid goes back onto the rim. I think that's four chances Rutgers has had to grab the lead and has not been able to. Wonderful effort, though. Got to commend Sierra Calhoun, a veteran, a grad student coming in for one year at Rutgers and sacrificing the body to save the ball. Indiana gets it in. Jalen Penn double teamed, able to get it out of there. Hoosiers do a good job to break the press. That's the most composed I've seen Indiana breaking the press this entire half. Here's Pat Bird, flips it outside, 10 seconds now on the clock. Inside, Royster puts it up and in. Strong move by Kim Royster. And a big bucket. It gives Indiana a three-point advantage. She's the only senior in the rotation for Indiana. First four-year senior that Terry Morin's gotten to coach. And that's who the Hoosiers go to to get a big bucket. Garantes, top of the key. Scarlet Knights down by three. Calhoun pops a three, got it! Sierra Calhoun drills a three, and we're tied at 51. Approaching the six minute mark remaining here. Inside, great look, laid in by Brenna Wise. That's a great screen under the basket by Indiana. Going into this, Rutgers knew it'd see a lot of screening action, would have to prepare for that, and Wilson just got stuck behind it. Hoosiers back up by a bucket, 53-51. Plenty of time here, five minutes, 40 seconds left in the fourth. Wilson to Garantes. Morella Garantes puts it up and in, draws the foul. And a chance again for Rutgers to take the lead. I'll tell you, it's January 31st, but this game feels an awful lot like a March game. This is a great drive, drive by Garantes. Didn't start this game, played just two minutes in the first half. Seven points, six rebounds, three blocks for Garantes, who has been integral to the comeback in this second half. T tied at 53, and Garantes at the line. Free throw, good. Rutgers has its first lead of the game, 54-53. Full court pressure by the Scarlet Knights. And it's nearly turned over. Indiana unable to get it across. Double dribble is the call. Wow, and it seemed like Indiana was just about to get it over. Brenna Wise looked a little unsteady, but you get the ball into Ali Patberg's hands and you've got to like what you're doing. But Rutgers does not give up on the press in that situation, which I like. Sometimes teams will back off once the opponent gets towards half court, but Rutgers stayed with it. They committed to it. And a whistle inside, foul on the Hoosiers. That'll be the third team foul on Indiana here in the fourth quarter. And it's on Grace Berger. That's her first. And Rutgers will inbound on the baseline. CC Cryer triggers in off of Carey's hands. Saved by Calhoun. What's the call? Last touched by Indiana. Five minutes, 16 seconds left to the fourth. Rutgers with a one point lead. Garantes. CC Cryer, crossover dribble. Bounce pass in the corner, Peleg Pelk for three. Off the rim, no. And a foul over the back. They'll call it on Stacia Carey, who pleads her case. That's her second. And third team foul on the Scarlet Knights. Timeout on the floor. Four minutes, 58 seconds here in a Bruising Big Ten Conference game. 
Our score, Rutgers 54, Indiana 53 on BTN+. Plus. And Indiana, if you take a look at their upcoming schedule, they're not thinking about that right now. They are down by one here against Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights able to come back with sensational defense, which has forced 19 Indiana turnovers. Well, the one thing I will say is for Indiana, this is the start of four of five games on the road. This is not an easy stretch for the Hoosiers by any means. Pat Berg comes in to get the pass. Now double teamed, gets it across to Yaney. So Indiana breaks the press. They're down by one. Pat Berg flips it inside. Royster back outside, three point shot off the back rim. No, knocked out off of the Hoosiers. And a foul call there too on Brenna Unwise, Wise. Yeah. Just her first, but that's four on Indiana in the quarter. But one thing I will say about the Hoosiers, this is unlike Rutgers who has Cryer and Wilson in the starting lineup. It seems like Ali Patberg has to do a lot of the heavy lifting to break the press. Rutgers has a couple of point guards that can cycle in. It's not quite the same for Indiana. Here's Cryer up top. Scarlet Knights with a one point lead. Four minutes and 15 seconds left. Cryer dribbles in and the foul underneath called on the Hoosier. No, they're gonna call it on Rutgers. Call it on CC Cryer, offensive foul. We'll see here, I don't know, Brenna Wise, she catches only part of the body on that call, but you could see it took the officials a while to make the call. Frank Steratore and Kevin Pethel looked at each other for about five seconds to try to figure out what the call was gonna be. Coach Stringer, not happy with that call at all. Here's Pat Bird. Trying to dribble through, flips it across to Yady. Indiana, a chance to regain the lead. Down by one. Just inside, four minutes left. Berger tries to toss it inside, stolen by RU. Up ahead, Garantes, re-stolen by Indiana. Garantes gets it back and scores. A bizarre play. <laughs> Very fitting in a bizarre game. And big collision blocking foul called on Rutgers. That's a tough call because it seems like CeCe Cryer takes that right in the chest. The one thing is though, that the ball handler has the cylinder as it's called. You're allowed to move in your cylinder. And Cryer gets right up in Pat Berg's face defending that. So I think she got too close to Pat Berg in trying to draw the call. If she's maybe a foot back, CC Cryer may get that 50-50 call, but because she's right up in Pat Berg's face and she's got nowhere to move but into Cryer, I think that's why the call was a blocking foul rather than a charge. Allie Pat Berg at the line, hit the first. She'll get another, an 81% free throw shooter, averaging just under 16 points a game. A chance to draw the Hoosiers back to within one. And her second, no good, rebound. Stacia Carey, it's a two-point Rutgers lead, 56-54. Scarlet Knights ranked 17th in the nation, coming in at 16-4, and 8-1 and one in the conference. A zone look here from Indiana, trying to mix things up. Garantes fakes the three, flips back outside, Cryer for three, off the rim. Rebound pulled down by Brenna Wise and a chance for the Hoosiers to tie it up or take the lead with a three. Less than three minutes left in regulation. Pepper flips it outside, bounce pass, comes in. Five on the shot clock, shot put up, doesn't go. Rebound put up, doesn't go. Stacia Carey, big defense. Long outlet up to Garantes, who scores! Are you by four? 58-54, 
2.25 remaining. And the crowd here at the rack on its feet. They have witnessed a big comeback by Rutgers, but it's not over yet. Here's Yaney, top of the key. Inside 10 on the shot clock. Yaney loses the handle, comes out to Patberg, launches a three and hits. Huge shot by Ali Patberg, and Indiana closes to within one. Rutgers very nearly had yet another turnover there, but Patberg, that's the foot in the ground Indiana has needed for the last 10 minutes. A minute 45 left, 15 on the shot clock. Here's Wilson. Goes to Cryer in the corner, double team. Sharice Wilson fakes the three and a timeout. Called by C. Vivian Stringer. 137 remaining. Rutgers hanging on to a one point lead. They trailed by as many as 14 in this one. A huge run for Rutgers in this second half. The 55 has done exactly what it's supposed to do, but a, a well timed timeout from C. Vivian Stringer because even with six seconds left in the shot clock, Rutgers was going with all the skip passes and trying to lob it over the zone. Indiana was trying to go to Rutgers into three pointers from way outside the arc. Again, the only problem is you got six seconds on the shot clock. So off the inbounds, which will come, I believe, from the sideline, Rutgers will have to execute quickly. Now, this is not where you want to inbound from with six seconds to shoot. Garantes will trigger. Into Cryer, five seconds. Down to four, Cryer dribbles in, puts it up, and draws the foul. With one second on the shot clock. That's the only thing you can do really for Rutgers. If you don't get a wide open look from deep, attack the basket and see if you can get a whistle. And that's exactly what Cryer was able to draw there. So you see Cryer at the line. 67% free throw shooter, and hits the first. A chance now to put the Scarlet Knights up by three. And the second, good as well. It is a three point Rutgers lead, 60 to 57, full court pressure by the Scarlet Knights. They throw it away, Cryer steals and scores. It's a five-point Rutgers lead. Indiana breaking the press, and they get an easy bucket the other way. Alexa Goulbe, three-point RU advantage, 62 to 50. RU advantage, 62 to 59. A minute 10 left in regulation. Inside pass, Stacia Carey can't find the handle. Indiana comes up with it. Here's Pat Berg. Flips it back outside. Driving in, blocking foul on Rutgers. Brenna Wise draws the charge. Draws the block rather, and she'll go to the line. And Wise, a terrific free throw shooter, 92% as we mentioned earlier. You know, it seemed like Carey had good positioning. She was outside the restricted area. It looked like she had both feet set and looked like Wise ran right into her. Free throw. Good. She'll get one more. A chance to draw Indiana to within one. Second good as well. Brenna Wise, tremendous free throw shooter. And a timeout called with 55.7 seconds remaining. And Rutgers holding on to a one point lead. Quite a thrilling game that we've had here at the rack. Rutgers able to force some turnovers. 55.7 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. In a big game for both teams, Rutgers trying to remain in first place in the Big Ten Conference with a victory. And Indiana 
trying to claw their way really back into the race. If you're Rutgers here, you got 55 seconds, so 25 second different shot and game clock. You want to see Rutgers use the full shot clock, get a good look, and give Indiana the ball back with the shot clock turned off. Carantes inside to carry, and that'll be a foul on the Hoosiers, and they are over the limit. That's going to send Stacia Carey to the line to shoot two. Yeah, that helps too. I mean, both teams are over the limit. The one problem for Rutgers, Carey has been one of the best free throw shooters in the conference overall in Big Ten play as well. She's three of seven from the line today. And her first is good. So, Rutgers up by a bucket, 63-61. Now up by three, 64-61 Scarlet Knights. And Terry Morin calls a timeout for Indiana. Want to advance the ball, and you don't want to allow Rutgers the opportunity to set up the 55 press as well. So a good decision. Now both teams left with one timeout. But a chance also for Indiana to talk things over a little bit and try to figure out what you want to do here. Whether you want to extend the game, go go to the hole early and see if you can get the maximum amount of possessions, or if you try to go for the tie here and hit the three on the road. Well, both teams remain on the road after this one. Indiana will visit Nebraska on the weekend before they return home to take on Minnesota on February 6th. These two teams will play again this season on the 18th of February. That game will be at Indiana. And Rutgers will hit the road for their next game at Minnesota this weekend on Super Bowl Sunday before they return home for a huge game against Maryland here on February 10th. Now what a wacky season Minnesota has had. They started 12-0. They're 1-7 one one since. But the motto around Rutgers, even when Rutgers got into the AP Top 25, is approach every game like you're still hunting. It's very easy to look at Rutgers and say, well, they're now the hunted. They're number one in the Big Ten, have been since the start of the season, ranked in the top 25. But you've got to keep that attacking attitude, keep that hunting attitude, if you will. And Rutgers has shown that in the second half in a game where it was outplayed for the first 25 minutes. The Scarlet Knights have a great chance to win. Bendu Yaney will inbound for Indiana. Hoosiers down by three. But a lot of time left here, 48 seconds. Pat Berg, a wise Pat Berg, thinking about the three. Indiana does not have to think three here, they have time. But they do take a three and can't connect. Nice job by Caitlin Jenkins to tap that rebound over to Sharice Wilson. And a reach in foul on Indiana will send CC Cryer to the line. You're surprised that Indiana was looking three that early. I'm not surprised. I am surprised that it's Ben Duganey who took the three. She hit one earlier in the game, but she's shooting 19% on the season from behind the arc. What didn't help the Hoosiers either. Off the ball, there was a screen. It looked like Wise had said it. She got run right over. There was no whistle, though. You see Cryer unable to hit the free throw. She'll get another. And the second, good. So that's a big one as it makes it a two possession game, 65-61. So another timeout called. This is a 30 second timeout. Did they not call the timeout? I don't think Indiana did. <laughs> Coach Stringer wants to know what happened here. No, it's, okay, so no timeout. I thought Indiana might use its final timeout just to get out of the 55 again. But you need the timeout here in case they've got trouble inbounding. Indiana gets it in. Here's Pat Berg. And he flips ahead to Pat Berg. In the corner, three-point shot off the rim, no. Rebound, Garantes. Garantes. Got a foul. And finally, the foul is called with 11.8 seconds remaining. Rutgers with a four-point lead. And the Scarlet Knights, it's not over yet, but it would appear 
that they may be able to get out of the rack tonight with a very hard fought, tough victory, a game which they trailed by 14 points. Now all that separates Rutgers from the win is a couple of made free throws. Remember, Rutgers was down nine at halftime, their largest deficit of the year at intermission. And Sharice Wilson hits the free throw. Rutgers was down double digits in the second half, but something that Rutgers assistant Nadine Doman told me before tonight's game, she said this is a tactician's league, a great tactical move by C. Vivian Stringer breaking out the 55 press. Second free throw, good as well. It's a six-point lead, a two-possession game. And now Indiana, of course, with 11.8 seconds remaining, has got to think three. They need two three-point field goals to tie the game. If you're Indiana now, you need, yeah, like you said, you need two threes. You need to get a look here, either get a steal off the inbounds, or you have to foul pretty quickly after a make and hope that Rutgers misses a pair at the stripe. When you think about who Indiana goes to here, You've got to start, obviously, with Brenna Wise, one of the best three-point shooters in the conference. Jalen Penn has been shooting the three ball at 47% in the conference. But the fact that Rutgers, like you said, Lou, was down 14 in a game where it shot 27% from Lee. Yeah, you really don't have, with 7.9 seconds to go, you really don't have much time to try to go for a steal. Expect Rutgers to look for Sharice Wilson. She's been perfect at the stripe in this one. Wilson will inbound. Oh, can't look for her. <laughs> she, will, she will trigger here. Gets it into Cryer. Cece dribbles away from pressure and finally draws the foul with 5.1 seconds remaining. You figure one free throw will win it here. Yeah, you'd like to think. She will shoot two. And a big free throw by C.C. Cryer makes it a four-point game. No timeouts for either team, so Indiana will have to inbound this from the baseline. And the second, good as well. It is a five-point game. Patberg dribbles up, throws it up, and that will do it. Rutgers, to the, the delight of their fans here at the rack, wins a tough one against the Indiana Hoosiers. Final score, are you 69, Indiana 64. Make no bones about it. This is the grittiest win for this top 25 Rutgers team. Indiana dominated the first 25 minutes of this game, essentially. Rutgers shot worse than 30% from the floor in the first half.